So it's been a while since I've had a new YouTube video and this is one that's come up and I thought I would dive into it a little bit is a little bit around conditional access, but in particular within conditional access, uh, authentication context. This is one that I keep seeing that I've been, uh, I haven't really fully understood. So I figured I would dive into it. A uh, couple precursors before we dive into it. Uh, one, this is still in preview. Uh, so all the traditional stuff that Microsoft says, it's in preview, it's a feature, it could change. Um, I don't foresee a lot of changes coming to it. This is pretty well baked into a few different places as you'll see. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what it is. Again, just be wary of using it in production, but this gives you some cool functionality when it comes to certain apps. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so first thing we're gonna take a look at, conditional access, cloud apps, actions, and authentication context. I'm gonna put all the link to links to these documents down in the video description below. So we're gonna jump right down to authentication contexts in preview. So this jumps us down further in the article where it talks through how authentication context can be further used to secure data, actions, and applications. Uh, whether it's custom applications, applications already in Microsoft 365, uh, SharePoint, applications that you're using Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, formerly Microsoft Cloud App Security or MCAS with. So we're gonna start by looking at how you configure these authentication contexts, how you set them up, uh, and then how you can go add them to conditional access policies. And then once you get down here, it talks through tagging resources with authentication context. These link over to a few different articles. So using sensitivity labels is where we'll start. That goes into here and talks us through how we can use sensitivity labels with cloud app security, uh, particularly around groups and sites. If you're curious about sensitivity labels setting up the whole ability to use sensitivity labels and Azure information protection with groups and sites, check out the other video I did on setting all of this up for groups and sites. I'll link that one down below. I have a whole separate video on just being able to uh, use Azure information protection and uh, the sensitivity labels with groups and sites. That's gonna be key when you're setting up authentication context. From there, there's also like some really basic documentation on setting up authentication context and cloud app security. And then finally, you can use conditional access authentication context within your own developed apps. This one, I'll put a link to, I'm not gonna look at this, I'm not a developer. This is one that frankly doesn't really interest me when it comes to authentication context. But if you're curious, you can go check it out. So authentication context. This is all the documentation, all the links are below. Let's start by actually jumping over to Azure Active Directory. I'm in my Azure Active Directory environment within security. Uh, I jump straight to here just to keep my tenant ID and some of that a uh, little bit more hidden. So this is Azure Active Directory going into portal, going into aad.portal.azure.com, and then clicking on that security tab that's down a little bit further. From here, authentication contexts are really an aspect to conditional access. So we're gonna click into conditional access. These are a bunch of the conditional access policies I already have set up. Down here underneath the policies, you'll see authentication contexts in preview. This is where you wanna start. You need to have an authentication context for everything else we're gonna do. Uh, I did see there is a limit to it. I think it's 250 authentication contexts. Take care when you set them up because they can't be deleted while it's in preview. This is one that I anticipate once authentication contexts come out of preview, uh, you'll be able to delete them, change them, but that is one limitation right now in preview. So if you click into authentication context, uh, there's some getting started. These links under configuration steps I'll link back to the articles we just looked at. So if you don't see them in the show notes, if you're in here, you wanna to click to learn more, great, you can do that. 
Authentication context will show you ones we already have set up. You can see here, I already have a test authentication context description. This is a test. Uh, if you click to create a new authentication context, you'll actually find that it's like there's nothing to it. You give it a name and this is going to be what you want that context to be. You can see a couple of the examples here, strong authorization, trusted devices, trusted locations. Think of authentication contexts as essentially a bit of a label. Um, this just says, I'm gonna go label certain applications, certain things with this authentication context. This could be uh, authentication context to whatever you want it to be, add a description to it, and then whether or not you wanna publish it to apps. Once you publish it, you're gonna be able to use it for kind of what they said here. Publish once you finish configuring conditional access policies for the tags so that this is actually available to your apps to use. Other than that, IDs are just manually assigned. You can see, maybe it was 25, maybe it's not 250. You can see I have 25 of them here. It's just gonna grab the next ID in the list. I'm not gonna create another one because frankly, I only have 25 and if I wanna use one, since I can't delete them, we're just gonna use this test auth context that I have. It does say delete. Maybe that documentation is outdated. Maybe I could delete it, but I have my authentication context set up configured. Uh, the next thing I'm going to want to do is actually go in and maybe I want to set a conditional access policy for this. There's a couple ways we could possibly go. Since we're in our conditional access policies, we're going to go set up a new policy and do that first. So we're going to go into conditional access, new policies, and this is going to be our test authentication context policy. Users and workloads, this is just who you want this to be assigned to. This is all typical conditional access policy stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and do all users and uh, I should probably do, you know what, I'm gonna do this. We're gonna go selected users and groups. I'm gonna do users and groups. I think I have a demo group out here. I'm just gonna do a demo group because I don't want to inadvertently lock myself out. So we'll assign this to my demo security group. I should not be in there. I'm actually gonna leave this in report only. So I shouldn't lock myself anyways, just being safe. Cloud apps, actions, or authentication contexts. I am actually worried here about authentication contexts. So user actions is another new one. If you're registering or joining devices, we're worried about authentication contexts. Now you'll see this is gonna be a conditional access policy that's going to apply when I'm in this test authentication context. So demo security group, logging into something that is tagged. We're gonna think of this as essentially being tagged with my test authentication context. Now for conditions, I can go set particular locations. So whether I'm coming from a particular location, some device um, coming in via the browser. So this, again, just typical conditions here. I'm gonna leave, um, we'll just leave this set wide open. Grant access, um, sure, we're gonna grant access. But this is where we could potentially say we wanna require multi-factor authentication. What authentication contexts do is give you a little bit more granularity. So instead of requiring multi-factor authentication all the time for a particular app, um, you'll see when we start getting into sensitivity labels, we could require multi-factor authentication based on how a group or a site is tagged with a particular authentication context. Require a multi-factor authentication. Session controls, if we wanted to go in and set up these, app enforced restrictions, conditional access, app control, uh, different things here. I'm not gonna do anything there. I wanted to keep this fairly basic in showing you how you would go set a conditional access policy for that particular authentication context. So we can create this test authentication context policy. So now I have a conditional access policy that is going to force that particular 
multi-factor authentication if I had actually turned it on when I'm in that authentication context. So how do I go through now and say, when does this apply? When is this authentication context actually going to take place? Now I can go over to information protection. So over at compliance.microsoft.com, uh, so just the Microsoft Compliance Microsoft Center, Microsoft Purview, that's where we're sitting over here in that Compliance Center. Just refresh that to get back in, and then uh, the information protection. Uh, this is my sensitivity labels. Now I can go in and we're gonna create a new sensitivity label for that authentication context. So create label, and we're just gonna keep going with this. Test, we'll call it our auth context label. I'm just gonna copy and paste this because it's test, description for users, perfect. Uh, now next, this is where we're gonna worry about the scope. I don't think you can do authentication context yet at the item level. It doesn't show that. If you go back and look at the documentation here, it specifically calls out groups and sites when it comes to authentication contexts. For now, we're gonna stick with groups and sites. I'm not gonna worry about schematized, schematized data assets. So groups and sites. So now we can do external sharing and conditional access. And this is why I don't think you can do it with items is you don't have conditional access settings over items themselves. Uh, you can go down to that site and group level. So this is that key aspect here, conditional access. Because you'll remember we just set up our conditional access policy for that auth context. Next, now we have control external sharing from a labeled setting. This doesn't give us anything with auth context. This is just saying uh, if you want to limit sharing. This is another one that's in that other video if you want to go see more of that. We're going to go in and use Azure Active Directory conditional access. So the conditional access policies we just set up to protect labeled SharePoint sites. And this is where we can do it based on if users can access it based on unmanaged devices. So if you're just gonna stick to hybrid Azure AD, that's what this is. But now we have choose an existing authentication context that has a policy. And you'll see now we have this test auth context. This is a test. So this is going back to that authentication context label that we set up in Azure Active Directory. So now we can say if a group or site is tagged with this particular label, uh, this authentication context is going to apply. And because this particular authentication context is going to apply, we're going to apply that conditional access policy to require MFA. So now we can go next, next, go ahead and create this label. Once this label is created and we've published it out, um, we could say, go ahead and publish this label out. I may want to use this to sensitivity labels to publish. Uh, we can go find that test authentication context. I'm going to kind of move through this a little quickly. Uh, I've gone through this, I believe, in the other video. Uh, if not, publish out the label. We're going to publish this to all users and groups. They can use it. We're not going to necessarily go in and require a link it to a custom help page. We just want it to be able to be used. Um, we don't want to apply this label by default. Name your policy. We're going to keep going with our whole uh, test auth context labeling. And next, and submit. So this will publish this label out now. This We're not going to be able to see it today. It can take up to 24 hours. But this now will publish this label out. And if someone categorizes a site or a group, with our test authentication context label, uh, which is that auth context, if someone navigates from a site that is unlabeled to this site, it's going to use that conditional access policy and actually force them through multi-factor authentication when they browse to that particular SharePoint site. So in this way, if you have highly confidential sites, uh, maybe sites you don't want people to download information from, uh, classified sites that require extra security, you can use that combination of authentication contexts to create that context, set up the conditional access policy for it, 
and then label any of those SharePoint sites that contain that highly sensitive content to maybe block downloads, to require additional MFA prompts to ensure that anytime somebody accesses it, they get prompted for MFA. But now your authentication context is all set up and configured to force MFA for sites labeled in that way. Super cool. It uh, gives you that uh, granularity when it comes to certain applications to, to be able to force that um, authentication context. Uh, we talked about the other ones around creating session policies and Defender for Endpoint. I might have to do another video on this and show you how that's set up. I do need to go in and set up one of my apps to be single sign-in. So this gives you an overview of authentication context, how you can use them for SharePoint sites, built-in applications, Azure Active Directory, uh, sensitivity labels, all of those things. I'll put links to all this type of documentation down in the comments below. If you have any questions, anything else you want to see around authentication context, uh, let me know in the comments below as well. Again, if I can get an app set up, I'll do another follow-up video on going through the configuration in Microsoft Defender for Cloud also, uh, and showing some of the details there. Uh, and also, if there's any other videos you want me to do, uh, particularly around security, compliance, administering Microsoft 365, uh, let me know as well. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and we will see you in the next video.